Hey, so we got this USB charger here, and you got five volts approximately coming out the sides for your, to charge your USB. And the difficulty with getting that is that, well, we're going to plug it into an outlet that has 120 volts RMS. So the AC to DC converter is taking this AC signal, and it's got to convert it to this um, five volt DC signal. And there's quite a few steps involved. But what I'd like to do here is just kind of show a sort of a simulation, a really super basic simulation of, of uh, multiple steps that get us from this 120 volts RMS down to this 5 volts DC. And to show that, let's first take a look at a basic simulation just showing our, um, our source, our 120 volt source, and then the, the load that we're trying to drive. All right, so here's our initial circuit. We've got our AC source right here, and it's connected over here to our load, which we're just modeling as a resistor. And if we wanted to model that um, the voltage that's coming out of here, that's what we're showing on the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on. And you can see that we've got 120 volts RMS here. Um, you can see the maximum is actually 170. And that's actually because it's 120 volts RMS, which is more of sort of like an effective or kind of like an average voltage that's across here. Um, another video um, has more about that. But um, if what we're really trying to get is that 5 volts DC across here. So if we just go ahead and add another scope, we can see what's going across our, our load here. And looking across our load here, we find unsurprisingly that it's exactly the same thing as what was across our source because they're connected directly. And we're not quite there yet. We haven't quite achieved 5 volts DC across here. Actually, we're pretty far away. But the next thing that we can do um, towards that goal is to um, put a transformer in here. And we discussed that more in a, in a previous video, and that's our, our first step. So let's go ahead and throw a transformer in here. All right, so here's our transformer. So you can see that the magic is happening right about here, and it's, it's um, translating the voltage. And so we're going to do a, an A value of 29 here, and what that's going to do is drop the voltage. So the voltage that we see coming over across our load here is shown down here. And it's actually, you can see that max is something closer to five, a little bit above five, because we're going to still have to work with it a little bit. So then um, the next thing you're, we're going to need here is a rectifier, um, because we don't really want these negative voltages, it's just five um, volts positive DC that we're looking across it. And in order to, to do the rectifying, we're going to use a diode. So let's see what happens when we pop that in here. All right, so what we did is went ahead and put a diode in right here. And what that diode's doing is only allowing current to flow in one direction. So you can see it's like it's, fl it's uh, flowing now, and then it stops, and then it's going to flow again. And it's not going to allow current to go in that reverse direction. So you can see if we look at the voltage that's actually across our, um, our resistor here, we're just getting this, um, this positive voltage and then it flat lines out because it's not letting that current go back. So we've only got a positive voltage that's going across our resistor here now. We're not going to have that negative side. Now you can imagine maybe this isn't that efficient because we've just kind of wasted that negative voltage that's across here, and you'd be right. So there are sort of more, more involved ways to do this, so we're actually going to capture some of that negative signal that we're losing. But um, let's go, just to show you real quick how that works, let's um, take a look at a different um, setup here. Okay, so this is a more complicated setup, and it's allowing the current to actually keep flowing through here um, through this sort of complex um, set of diodes. And you can see that our output voltage here is going gonna, is gonna, to um, have, it's going to essentially inverse the, um, that negative voltage, so we're all getting all these positive bumps. So you can imagine this is going to be a more efficient way to do it. But let's just go ahead and back to that simple way, because like I'm just trying to make this as simple as possible just to get the basic idea across. The next thing that we're going to want to do here is sort of sort of flatten this out because you can see we've got these you know these big bumps and we want just a constant um, DC voltage across here. So we're going to go ahead and throw in a capacitor to um, to do that smoothing function. Okay, so now I got a capacitor right here and let's go ahead and run this and see how this works. So as you can see, if you look at our output here, it's um, our output's actually looking pretty good. It's just it's going up and, and coming down a little bit. There's still a little bit of a of a delta there, but it's really flatlined that, that voltage. Um, right around, you can see the maximum is right around 5 volts. So this is getting really close to what we're looking for. But um, how's that capacitor doing it? Um, well, you can see that up here is the, um, the current's coming in. And when that, that current's allowed to go in, um, it's actually like charging up that capacitor. And then when the, when the current's stopping, it's, it's, um, that capacitor is sort of discharging into here. So that capacitor is just kind of working as almost like a, like a battery there. It's like storing up and then it's releasing it. And as it, 
as it stores up and releases, it just kind of sort of equalizes out the current that's coming across here. So we're going to get a constant voltage across the load, uh, fairly constant at least. I mean, it's pretty close. In order to get more, um, we need a, a regulator that's going to that's going to keep that voltage just flatline it. Um, and regardless of what type of uh, load we have up here. Um, well, that's just a little bit beyond the scope of what I um, wanted to show here, but I think this gets sort of the basic idea across of how we go from this 120 volts AC to this uh, 5 volts DC here with some, um, some simple elements in our, in our circuit here. But let me just go ahead and summarize that with a little plot up here. All right, so we got our AC source, and you can see the output here. I'm just drawing like a, um, you know, in this case, it was 170 max um, AC signal that's here. And the next thing that we did is, is we used a transformer. And of course, what that transformer did is just reduce that voltage, um, like we were trying to get it all the way down to 5 volts. And the next thing we did is we didn't want these negative voltage here, so we um, used a rectifier. And if you recall, what that rectifier did was our diode, and it just kind of got rid of that, that negative portion of it. And the next thing we want to do is sort of smooth this out. And to do that, we used a capacitor. And we got a plot that sort of looks like this, where it's pretty constant, close to 5 volts, but it was going down a little bit. And in order to um, make that more constant over various loads, we wanted to sort of like sh shave it off right here. We used a regulator. Well, we didn't really show the regulator, but that's, this is what it's, it would do. It would just flatline that voltage across. So this is the basic process of how we start off with our AC signal at 120 volts RMS. We went through a bunch of steps, add a couple components, and we get down to our flatlined 5 volts DC, just like is happening here in our USB charger. So hopefully that was helpful, and until next time, take care.